book readings with Miss Bernard. Hello everyone and welcome to day 28, the last day of our Black History Month series. Wow, seems like the month went by so fast, but I hope you learned something along the way. Today's story is When the School Shut Down, a young girl's story of Virginia's lost generation in the Brown vs. Board of Education of Topeka decision. Written by Yolanda Gladden, as told to Dr. Tamara Pizzoli. Illustrated by Keisha Morris. Before we begin today's story, I just want to take a second and look back at all the wonderful stories that we read during our Black History Month series. Wow, how awesome, all those stories that we read together. There were stories of hope and perseverance and strength and change for the better. So if you missed any of those stories that Miss Bernard read, you can go ahead. I will put in the description of this video, I'll put the link to the Black History Month series playlist on my page, okay? So that you can feel free to re-listen to anything you'd like and hopefully learn something new each time. All right, let's begin our story today. When the school shut down, a young girl's story of Virginia's lost generation and the Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka decision. A child who only learns at school is an uneducated child. West African proverb. 1954, Virginia. The year Yolanda Gladden was born, the United States looked much different than it does today. The country's cars, clothes, land, and even laws reflected old ideas. Some were classic and others were simply cold. Yet, in that same year, on May 5th, 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court unanimously decided that separating children in public schools based on the color of their skin was no longer legally allowed. They called it the Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka decision. The world seemed to be changing. And in Farmville, Virginia, Carrie Jefferson's world was growing. Yolanda was the first of Mama Carrie's three children. She was born with beautiful brown skin and a crown of coily, deep brown hair. After Yolanda came, her sister, Heldort, followed by a baby brother, Alexander. Growing up, Yolanda and her siblings knew not to mix too much in grown folks' business. They had their own business to mind, like collecting firewood, setting the table for dinner, and making up fun games to play between chores. But every now and then, Yolanda would catch bits and pieces of her mama's conversation with her Aunt Dorothy and Uncle Tank. They'd talk about everything under the sun, recipes, religion, right and wrong. There was talk of love and of new laws. In fact, Yolanda picked up a lot from paying attention to her family her friends, and people in her neighborhood. She learned how to swap five cents for a Mary Jane from Uncle Tank's convenience store. Yolanda would slurp down her favorite fizzy drink with such speed and satisfaction that Uncle Tank nicknamed her Soda. She learned that a new hairdo could make anyone look and feel like a queen at Aunt Magnolia's beauty salon. And every day at home, Yolanda learned from watching her mother sew the entire family's clothes by hand that it didn't take a lot of money to look and feel like a million dollars. Watching her family members taught Yolanda how to carry herself. Head high, shoulders back, spine straight, proud. The most important lessons came on Sunday mornings at First Baptist Church. Yolanda heard Bible stories of conflict and struggle, trouble and triumph. These same stories demonstrated power, resilience, faith and love. 
She would sit wedged between her mother and siblings, listening to the tales of David and Goliath, Moses, Jonah, and Jesus Christ. If Yolanda or her siblings fidgeted or whispered, their mama would shoot a glare in a direction that needed no words at all. We all know that glare. <laughs> As she grew, Yolanda noticed the world around her was divided into two distinct colors, black and white. Late 1940s, early 1950s, Virginia. She knew from overhearing her mama, Uncle Tank, and Aunt Dorothy that sorting people based on color was nothing new in Farmville and that how each of the two groups lived and learned was quite different indeed. When her mama was in school, the classrooms were cold enough to make one's teeth chatter. Books were used, tattered, and torn, and school buses ran late or not at all. 1951, Farmville, Prince Edward County. Mama and Aunt Dorothy, along with several other high school students, had decided to boycott. They refused to attend classes until their voices were heard and their learning materials improved. Some people saw boycotts as nothing more than making mischief, but the students knew boycotting was necessary to make change. Change can be speedy or steady or incredibly slow. When Yolanda's mama and Aunt Dorothy graduated from high school in 1953, the conditions of public schools in Prince Edward County were still separate, still unequal, and still unfair. 1959, Virginia. Yolanda didn't fully understand all the conversations she overheard, but in 1959, Four years after the Brown versus Board of Education decision was made, she knew it was finally her turn to start school. The new integration law was supposed to be a step in the right direction, but by the time the first official day of classes rolled around, everything had changed again in Prince Edward County. White lawmakers demanded to keep children in Yolanda's town sorted by color. And to make sure they got their way, they shut down each of the public schools in Prince Edward County one by one. How could Yolanda go to school when there was no school to go to? It was then that Yolanda learned that because a law is legal doesn't mean it is just. And just because a law exists doesn't mean everyone will follow it. In reaction to the school closing, some people hit the pavement to protest. Others hit the books. Black parents, teachers, and community members across the county rallied together and created their own education system. They started schools and learning centers just for them. Black children of all ages met in church basements and even at one another's homes to attend school. From early morning to mid-afternoon, classes were in session. Education was their right, and absolutely no one could keep them from learning, knowing, and growing. All right. Yolanda wore the outfits her mother had sewn for her and showed up daily to her new school at First Baptist Church. She was one of about 20 students from ages 5 to 11. The students worked with the few materials they had, some borrowed and others barely functional. Yolanda and her classmates studied the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. <laughs> her teacher, Mrs. Herndon, would say, if you know your history, then you'll know where you're going. Mrs. Womack, another teacher, taught her that the history of black people did not begin or end with Africans being enslaved in America and included a rich, vast, glorious past, present, and future. Yolanda was intrigued by how many amazing and useful creations were invented by black scholars, scientists, researchers, artists, and innovators. Like Marcus Garvey, she knew black was a wonderful thing to be. The 
The schools in Prince Edward County were completely closed for five full years. But each school day, classes were underway at the community created black schools. A breakthrough finally came in 1964, the same year Yolanda turned 10 years old. The Supreme Court ruled the school shut down unconstitutional and demanded that all schools be reopened to all students. In the new classes at the Prince Edward School, black and white students were able to learn the same material in the same classrooms at the same time. Yolanda, who had been educated by her family, her church, and her community, passed each school exam with flying colors and was among the highest achieving students in her class. With the knowledge that opportunities to grow are all around and school can take place anywhere, Yolanda became a lifelong lover of learning. And she still stands with head high, shoulders back, spine straight, proud. Love, freedom, faith, and triumph. The end. All right, well, I hope you learned something today about the segregation and the desegregation of schools in Virginia. All right, like I said, I'm going to put the link to the entire Black History Month series down here in the description. So you can click on that and go back and check out any books that you missed, or you can go back and reread some of your favorite stories. Go ahead and put in the comments and tell me which one was your favorite, favorite story of our Black History Month series. Which day was your favorite? What book was your favorite? All right, this has been another Book Readings with Miss Bernard, but just because our Black History Month series is over doesn't mean you're getting rid of me. You'll still see me. I'll still come to you with wonderful stories. All right, as always, I hope you have a wonderful, magnificent, beautiful day. Bye-bye.